Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the five key activities in the auditing the inventory cycle. Always, I would like to remind you what we covered in the prior session. We looked at introduction to auditing inventory and warehousing, and we looked at the six functions in that cycle, which involved looking at various documents, the process, and basic accounting. So if you're not familiar with basic auditing of inventory and warehousing, please look at the prior session. Now, in this session, we would look at how do we divide the whole cycle into five major activities. So to effectively audit inventory in the warehousing cycle, auditor divide the process into five key activities. And as I mentioned in the prior session, inventory is related to other two major cycles, the purchase and acquisition cycle and the sales cycle. So let's take a look at the five key activities in cover each one of them very briefly because once needed, we're going to cover the specific topic later on. So the first step is acquire and record raw material, labor and overhead. Where do we cover this information? We cover this information in the acquisition and payment cycle. What do we look at in that cycle. We looked at the internal control over raw material, labor, and overhead. We performed tests of control, substantive tests of transaction in both the acquisition and the payment cycle, as well as payroll and personnel. We also looked at direct material, especially if a direct material is a big chunk of this manufacturing company. So simply put, this is already done. So this part is already done. Then what happened after we acquire material, labor, and overhead? Why do we acquire material, labor, and overhead? To move it into production, to move it to work and process. And this is where we have an internal transfer of asset and cost in the company. Here, what we're doing is we're moving the raw material from the raw material to work and process. We are allocating the direct labor to work and process. What do we need at this stage? In this stage, we need to be familiar with the cost accounting record and this is a major part of inventory and warehousing cycle here we would look at the internal control we make sure the accounting is being done accurately the assets are being transferred properly everything is accounted for and we will have a whole session for internal transfer of asset and cost which is basically auditing the cost account record for the company so this is part of it once we are done once we, once we produce an item, what do we do with it? We transfer it to finished goods, then we ship it, and we record the revenue and the cost. And this step, this activity in the inventory cycle is part of sales and collection. Therefore, it's already covered. What do we, what do, we do in the shipping? When we ship the goods, we prepare shipping documents. We have sales invoices. We make sure the record of revenues and costs are accurately documented. We make sure that all goods that are supposed to be shipped are actually shipped. All sales invoice are correct, so on and so forth. And we looked at this in the sales and collection cycle. So notice, out of three, two is already covered. Two, two key activities are covered. Then we would look at observing physical inventory we have to take inventory and this is a must in accounting and auditing this is a critical step notice it's a must must means the auditor cannot be satisfied by accepting the client numbers of inventory we have to check the dollar amount the unit the condition is it is it in still condition now you might be saying why am i why am I emphasizing this point? There's a landmark case back in the 1930s, in 1938, a company called McKinson and Robbins. It's a ph pharmaceutical company. And what did they do? They inflated their inventory by $20 million. You might be saying if it's a large company, $20 million is not a lot. Well, that's $20 million in 1937, 1938. That's a lot of money. So because of that case, because of that landmark case, guess what happened? Auditors cannot accept any inventory figures until they actually do what? Physically inspect. And when we say physically inspect, look at the condition. Is it still saleable? If not, then we have to write them down. But we would need to take a look at this physically absorbed inventory. We need to take a look at, at how we do it. There's a, in quote, 
a way to it certain internal control and we'll have a whole session about this physically absorbing inventory this will be part of inventory and the warehousing cycle and the fifth activity is price and compile inventory here we're looking at price pricing how do we determine the dollar amount the value of the inventory we looked at actual prices did it change is it the same so on and so forth did we take the price times the unit are we are we valuing the pro the inventory properly whether we are using fifo lifo weighted average is this being done properly and this is part of the inventory and warehousing cycle and we will have a separate recording about this key activity as well so as you can tell this is just an introductory session of what we're going to be seeing next what we're going to be seeing next is looking at three things the internal transfer of assets and costs which is auditing the cost accounting system or the work in process how to physically absorb inventory and how to properly compute price and compile the inventory valuation what should you do now you want to go to farhat lectures look at additional lectures that's going to help you whether you are an accounting student cpa candidate cma candidate or any other professional certification invest in yourself that's the best investment you can make